let's talk about jobs for a second. You know, in the paper, you say, uh, you know, AI automation puts 300 million full-time jobs at risk. And then you go on to say the adoption of AI is going to create 97 million jobs by 2025. So I think one of the biggest fears people have is about the job market. And, um, and we, you know, what most of us don't realize is uh, that most of the jobs that we all do today didn't exist um, even 10, 20 years ago. Uh, and we've completely disrupted and reinvented what humans have done for millennia. Uh, but the pace of change here is a lot faster. Um, what are your thoughts? How, how do you quell the fears or should we have fears about jobs? I think it, it's a pace thing. As you said, we've always responded. You know, it's been said that there's only two types of jobs, you know, or things. There are things that you need for living and there's things you need for entertainment in a way, right? Mm -hmm. The survive and thrive elements yeah. here. We have had such an improvement in our standard of living and even a reduction in the number of hours worked and we've created brand new industries and service sectors and more. But the pace of this is insane. But if we look at it from a localized perspective, what's at danger initially is the outsource jobs and the entry level jobs, because this is where that technology, we've discovered this new continent and they work for electrons, right? <laughs> they work for, you know, GPU hours. In the intermediate middle level, you can be so much more productive, which means that you can have more supply and more demand of that stuff. And then if you're a leader that can really leverage this technology, bring it together and think about how am I creating value, you become a multiplier. And so I think this is net aggregate massively impactful for economies, but we have to really look at what does our generation that has been taught to be a programmer do when this technology is as good as any graduate programmer? You know, what does it do when, again, any graduate job in that you can do via a screen the AI can probably do better in a year or outsource jobs as well for the global South. I get it. Um, but still, they're going to be fierce. I remember you were on the abundant stage with me, I think it was two years ago, and you said, look, we're not going to have any programmers in five years. And that was like front page across India, um, you know, and it caused fear. And of course, we're not going to have the old fashioned programmers, which are just humans on their own, it will be AI human partnerships that are doing the programming. But uh, let's talk about where you think, um, I, should people have some level of concern about the job market? Or do you think, as we have done decade after decade, century after century, uh, we've invented brand new approaches to jobs? A hundred percent. I mean, again, technology is an enabler. And so it's just about, are you embracing that technology to do more and create more value or not? Like, what would an accountant be who didn't use Excel or a spreadsheet, you know? Like, it doesn't make sense. Or a salesperson doesn't use a phone. This is just a technology it is. And it's up to us to embrace it and create even more value that way. Again, the nature of jobs will change. In your taught generalized computer science terms, I think, again, we're two years into our five-year prediction, right? Um, so we've got three more years. I don't think you need to learn, even now, if you use Claude and the artifacts feature for Anthropic, it will create programs on the fly for you. And you just talk to it like a human and it adjusts them. Devin is another one that's similar. Do you need to know the specific magical spells of a programming language anymore? No, why would you? You have this assistant. But what are you trying to do? You're trying to build software to do a job. That's all that matters. And again, when I first did it 23 years ago, we didn't have GitHub or any of these things where you could reuse code. You almost coded it from scratch every, every single time. time, every time directly on the thing. And this is how we do it. We build houses from scratch, but then we learn how to build houses. You know, in our company, we do something brand new, but it goes to our institutional knowledge. It's just now we can localize this knowledge. So I think that the key thing here is just explain the floor will raise. And if you don't embrace this technology, then you're going to be left behind. You're going to be left high, you know, low and dry. I think it was one of the points that we, we spoke about at length. You know, the way I put it bluntly is there are going to be two kinds of companies at the end of this decade. Those that are fully utilizing AI and those that are out of business. Do you agree it's that black and white? I think it is that black and white. I don't think we've got to the competitive stage yet because it was build the basic building blocks first, now starting to bring them together and then proliferate the technology. 
But in the next few years, we will see that competitive tension where companies can outperform because their core loops are embracing AI so they can do it better, faster, cheaper. And, you know, the global economy doesn't look too hot today, so it's going to be highly competitive. If you can reduce costs and have higher revenue, hey, you'll outperform.